We've come dressed like this today because we're having our special day to celebrate thinking about 100 years ago. We've done lots of work about what it was like all those years ago, especially in Trenton. Lots of photographs we've looked at, found out about the families, and we're going to recreate this photograph. So we've got you standing in the rows in your outfit, so you're going to look like this. In the basket, there's a collection of letters addressed to different people and two of the letters are addressed to Frank Harris, who's the postman who lived in Hempheath all those years ago. So two people are going to pick a letter that will allow them to travel back in time, just like Tom did in the Midnight Garden. And we're going to see who it's going to be. So Oscar, would you like to pick? the letters that are addressed to Mr. Frank Harris. Oh, right. So Emily and Jack are going to make their way to the magic door and travel back in time and have a fantastic adventure and meet some people from the past. So do you want to very carefully make your way towards the magic door? Thank you, Mrs. Mrs. Gurney. See you later. Letters. Pardon? Pardon? Welcome to Hemeath. I've been expecting you. Have you bought some letters for me? My name is Mr. Harris. Frank Harris. And you are? Good morning, Mr. Harris. My name is Emily and this is Jack. Can you tell us where we are, please? Well, my young fellow, we're at Trenton Station, where I've just picked up my letters for the morning delivery from Mr. Pennington, the station master. But Trenton hasn't got a station. Oh, yes, it has. <laughs> You have much to learn about Trentham in 1916. Lots of folks go to work by train. If we wait a minute, you'll see the 827 coming in. Here it comes now. Wow, look at it fluffy out, all that smoke. Well, you've got to have a steam engine to pull a train. There are people waiting for these letters. Are you two coming with me to do some delivery? Yes, please. I know where everyone lives in Emmy. I could tell you about some of them. Come on now, a brisk walk. Morning, Mr. Mould. Morning, Victor. Are you off today, young man? Morning, Frank. Yes, I'm going back today. Off to Luton to meet up with the regiment. Morning, Frank. Morning, youngsters. You helping out today? Yes, sir. This is it then, son. Off to do your bit again. You look after yourself, mind. I need you back here to look after the business. Here, have my paper to read on the train. What about cash? Do you have enough? Take this. You might need it to get a meal. Thanks, Pa. Better dash, or I'll miss the train. Cheerio. I've no time for them. I have to get up to the brickworks up Tillery Lane to see about my order. Do you youngins know how many of the houses were built by me round here? I'll tell you, over 50 in Hemeath so far. And I'm not done yet. I'm getting on quicker now. The new Duke's not so fussy about things like chimney designs. Enjoy your visit. Goodbye, Frank. Here, Jack. 
you want to pop these through Mr. Mould's letterbox, please? I'm busy, Fran. Do you want to come into the kitchen? Uh, we've just waved off young Vitti. His old man's right upset. We don't tell anyone. Mind you, must be hard not to think on poor Sidney Jones from across the road. He's only been gone a few months and now buried in France. A bit close to home, that one. Indeed, that's on my mind too. Uh, now they can make the men go, I'm afraid my Fred will get his papers. Uh, thankfully, Thomas is over age, so he should be safe. Aye, that's a worry for us all. And now they've got so many horses over there, they're going to need men like your Fred to keep them shod, aren't they? Aye, Fred's busy in the smithy with one of the horses from Ainsworth's next door. Of course, the military's taken so many of our horses, as well as our men. Last I heard, they had over a million over there. I just hope they knows how to look after them proper. I saw Thomas riding off on his bike early this morning, going to New Park, I believe. Yes, Mr Bailey sent for him. One of the carts needed fixing before it could go out. He's a good customer, always pays extra if we go up to the house. Now, I must get this washing out. I've got three lodgers now, and it's a clean shirt every day. So I'm not complaining, as they pay as well. The trouble is, I'm not getting any younger, and my back's playing up today. Here, let me carry that out for you. Thanks, Fran. You're a gent. Can you remember War Horse when Joey had to go to war? Yes, Mum read it to me. Then we got the DVD. That must be what they mean about horses being taken. Come on, you two. These letters won't deliver themselves. This is where we go to eat. Yeah, this is where we go to eat burgers. Well, they've got a few today. Look, this one's from London. And here's a picture postcard from Edinburgh. Manchester, this one. From all over. You can tell from the postmarks. Mr Harris, why does it say Hem Heath on the address? What about the name of the road? Well, I reckon Hem Heath is enough. I know where they all live anyway. You know, this is a busy place come the weekends when folk come down by train to visit Trentham Gardens. Mr Blair's doing a grand job keeping them tidy, with so many men gone away. Some Saturdays, you cannot get in here, what with men needing a drink and others using the telephone. Why do people come here to use the telephone, Mr Harris? Oh, call me Frank. Everyone else does. There's only a few houses in Emmeath with their own telephone. So, Mr Pember, let's folk come and use the one here. Now we have to call on Mr Fielding. I know he's got a telephone, and he owns a pot bank down in Stoke. His son, Ross, used to play football for Stoke. Come on. Good morning, Frank. Good morning, sir. Just one letter today. And who do we have here? This is Emily and Jack. They're visiting and helping me this morning. We've just seen Hannah at the smithy, and she's worried about losing Fred to the war. Yes, it's a worry for all of us, isn't it? My son Ross, he's down at the works these days. Uh, if it wasn't for him, I don't think I could manage, now that he's decided to be a, a pottery manager rather than a footballer. My son Ross used to play football for Stoke. He played six seasons with them. And he went to West Bromwich. My dad's ports the Potters. They're in the Premier League now. Where's Maddox got to? I need to go down to the kennels to see Will Wheatley about Sunday's hunt. Ah, at last. After I've been to the kennels, I might take a drive in the park. Mr Fielding always has the latest motor car. Enjoy your day, children. Goodbye, Frank.
Morning, Alice. Morning, Miss Flores. Off to school. Good morning, Frank. Where do you two go to school? I go to Trentham School. Mr. Foss is our headmaster, but he has to go away soon to be a soldier. We don't know who's going to look after all the bees and the chickens when he's gone. We can't do it on our own. How is Mr. Corn today? He's still very tired. Going to Landodno didn't seem to help him this time. He's not going into the works at the moment. Mr. Edmund's coming over to help out, I believe. Come on, Alice. You know I have a spelling test this morning. I mustn't be late. I know, I know. You can practice as we walk. Start with patriotism. Bye, Frank. P. A. T. O. Oh, this looks like the bank. Looks more like Trenton Station to me. Same man designed it, I believe. Perhaps in your time it isn't a police station no more. Morning, Frank. Uh, who have we here? Why are these children not at school? Let me introduce Emily and Jack from Ash Green. They're just visiting, and I have their teacher's permission. Thank you. I will have to check on that. Frank, did you hear about the uh, Duke excusing rent for those tenants who are fighting in the war? Yes, I heard that from Bert Chaliner down at Park Cottage. I gather it's ruffling a few feathers with the folk and stone. <laughs> He's not all that bad for his money and grand ways. He's doing his bit for the country in India. Even Millicent's driving ambulances in France. Yep, my William, he's over at Belton Park learning how to ride a motorcycle and fire a gun at the same time. Sounds mighty dangerous to me. You must be very proud of your boys, John. <laughs> I believe young Joseph Bassett's going over to Belton Park to join him soon. Did you catch any robbers this week, sir? Funny you should ask that, young man. Only yesterday I caught someone selling daffodils up at the station Turns out he'd nicked them out at Trentham Gardens, so he'll be in trouble when he's in court next week. Here comes Jessie, Mrs Hackney's maid. Hello, Jessie. Where are you going? It's such a hurry. Good morning, Frank. We're out of sugar, and Mr Hackney can't have his tea without. I must dash to Bickerton's. I hope the prices haven't gone up again. Last time, a two-pound bag cost me an old shilling. There's a letter from France for the Hackneys today. Oh, that's good. That'll cheer him up. See you later, Frank. Bye. Jessie's boss is a proper VIP. He was mayor of Stoke, you know. Mr Hackney, he plays golf across the road there, children. I'm told he's very good. Golf's not my game. I go down to Trentham on my day off for a leisurely game of bowls. The Hackneys play down there as well. I agree, John. <laughs> Who'd want to walk around 18 holes of a golf course when you can play a game of bowls from one place? <laughs> I do enough walking when I'm on me round. Well, bye, John. Frank, what's a shilling? Well, it's a, it's a bob, you know. A, Twenty bob make a pound. Ah, you mean the same as our 5p. Frank, do you know everyone in Hemheath? It's likely I do. Been here taking letters and telegraphs around since I was a lad, you know. First with my aunt, and then my cousin. Must be nigh on 30 years I've been walking these streets. Oh, it's a grand life. Give me the open air any day rather than life somewhere like, well, like the pits or the brickworks. Tempest Fugit, as my father used to say. Used to teach Latin. Mm, but it wasn't for me. Anyway, that means time flies and we must get a move on. Let's head back and go down Mr Bruff's Lane and Earl Street. I know this post office. I've been here with my mum. That's good to know. Built in 1903 it was. I work here now for Mr Littler. And I live down there at number 13. Now... Do you see that 
telegraph pole down at number nine. I don't expect that's still there in your time. That's Telegraph Cottage, where Mrs Smith looks after the switchboard so people can get connected. Here comes Emma now. Good morning, Emma. Morning, Frank. Any good news for us this morning? There's been quite a few letters come from France and Belgium, but I hear there's more going to the way. You know, last Christmas, they had to set up a special sorting office in London just for the post going out to cheer up our men. How's your Harold? Are the wedding plans going along? Indeed they are. He and Millie have set the date for December 29th. He hasn't had his papers yet, so he's still going to work as normal. Grand. I shall keep that date. Are you off out today? Yes, I know it's early days, but I'm off to see Alice Johnson about making me a new dress for the wedding. She's worried about her brother Len. She's not heard from him for a month. My Connie and May are in charge at the exchange. Then tonight we've got the Red Cross knitting group for the soldiers at the Methodist Church. Everyone's doing their bit. I've seen Mrs Varco going round for the penny collections. But now I really will have to go. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Goodbye, children. Bye. You'll remember I said that not many people have the new telephone. But when someone dials a number, it's Mrs Smith or the girls who connect them with the person they want to talk to. Now there's Mr Bickerton. He's got a telephone in his shop, so folk can ring in their orders. Hello there, George. You're loading up early. Hello, Frank. Yes, everybody's panicking that the food might run out. I've had orders for both flour and sugar this morning from Cornforths, Piddocks, Moorcrofts and Mrs Taylor already. So I'm off up to Albert Drive. Yes, Jesse was just complaining about the price of sugar. <laughs> Have you heard any news of the Paget boys at Oak Cottage, George? Yes, I think you brought a letter last week for George from the war office. I thank the Lord each day that my boys are too young to go. Mr Bickerton, sir, how far do you go with your deliveries? Well, that's a good question. I go down to Strongford and I go up to the Archdeacon at the Vicarage and I've even been all the way up to Tillery Cottages, so I do cover a fair few miles. I'm going over yeah. up to the van. Okay. Okay. What's the time, please, Frank? I'm starting to feel hungry. Goodness! It's nearly 11. I still have to deliver this to Amy Fiddler on Earl Street. And then I must head back. See, children, this letter has come from Belgium across the sea. That's where Mrs Fiddler's husband, Stanley, is. Who's the man on this stamp? <laughs> That's the king, King George. George V. Well, why not try some of my biscuits? We've got the new bourbon creams in, and they're proving very popular. Great idea, George. Actually, it's time for these two to go back to school. So perhaps we could give them some biscuits to take with them. Right-o. Wait a mo. We don't have any money, Frank. How much are the biscuits? No, I don't want paying for them. I've had some free samples anyway to promote the new biscuits. Here you are, children. Enjoy them. Now, I really must get going. <laughs> well, my young friends, my watch tells me it's time for you to get back to the station. Come on. Here we are. Well, I hope you enjoyed your visit to Hem Heath today. It was lovely to meet everyone and find out about them and to see there are just fields where our school is. Now I've got a letter here which I want you to deliver to a relative of mine. I'm sure he works at your school in your time. You'll know him. <laughs> He'll be very surprised to receive it. Mr Francis, he's our new caretaker. But we haven't seen him yet. Now, off you go. Through that door. And it's been a real pleasure to have had your company today. Oh, look who it is! What have you got in your bags? Mr Bickerton gave his biscuits for everyone. His shop is on Druff Lane. Oh, that's great. Fantastic. I'll share those later. We went to Trenton Station and there was a postman. Trenton had a station. We saw a train. It was puffing out lots of smoke. And a man who built all the houses. The and we went to the doctor's house. Yeah. And we saw the kitchen there. So we're going to go now and recreate the photograph. So we're going to go into the hall. Mr Darragay's children are there already. 
So I want you to make your way carefully into the hall, join them, sit down with them, and then we'll organise you like we practised so that you know which row you're in and we can do it really smoothly and it'll be fantastic. These letters are for our new caretaker. Mr Francis. He's over there. Oh, thank you very much. It'd be interesting to read what my great-grandfather was getting up to in them there days. Go on, you two. Go off and get your photograph taken. Go on. <laughs> <laughs>